Hi and welcome to kind of a weird video for me. I just wanted to sit down and chat because today's the day that the Goodreads Choice Awards came out and I have some thoughts and I need to express those thoughts. So I've been looking forward to the Goodreads Choice Awards for months now. I've been preparing to vote for these awards for quite a while and I've like been guessing what's going to be in it and when it came out today, I was really surprised with the selections and also the format has changed. In past years, there were three rounds. I'm pretty sure I have these numbers right, but there would be an opening round with 15 books per category, but there was also an option to write in whatever your favorite book of the year was. And then after a week or two, they would do another round with 20 so including some of those write-ins, and then it would go down to 10, and those would be the final things that you could vote on. And that's not the way that they're doing it this year. They're just doing an opening round, and then a final round, and then it's done. And there is no option to write in this year. And I was trying to think of why this bothers me so much, because really it doesn't seem like it matters. Like we all know that the Goodreads Choice Awards are just a popularity contest. They don't really mean anything, but the option of having a write-in makes it feel like it does actually matter, that your vote is actually being heard because there are a lot of smaller books that would get in that way, indie published things that otherwise might not get recognized and it it never really shifted the playing field that much but there were things that would shuffle around and I think it's also a really big opportunity for lesser known authors. Like we all know Stephen King wins something every year and it's just not fun at that point. But if you're able to at least express yourself that like this is the thing I think is the best this year and maybe have an opportunity to elevate someone who's not an old white man, then it, it just, the emotion behind it feels very different. Of course, there's like nothing associated with these awards. I don't think there's a cash prize or anything, but it also helps it feel more community run that way. Now it feels very corporate. I was looking to see if there was an explanation of why they've changed this year. I didn't look very hard, but I did find an article on Book Riot that said that they were changing it this year so that the nominees had to have an average rating over 3.5. And at first I was like, oh, that makes sense. But then as I was looking through what I might vote for in the year, I came across The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris, something that I read wasn't really for me, but I totally understand people who love it. It's not nominated for a Goodreads Choice Award despite having 34,000 ratings and 5,000 reviews, which is more than some of the things that are already nominated, and it has a 3.45 rating at time of recording, which just seems so petty, especially when you're blocking out an author of color in that way. Of course, I don't think it was intentionally done, but I do think that is going to be one of the side effects of removing this from being more community run. There's also books like Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce, which I was planning on reading, like I was gonna read it this week because I figured it would be in the Goodreads Choice Award, but it has a 3.41, but it has 77,000 ratings. Like if you do the math, a lot more people have given this five stars than a lot of other books on the list. And it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right to take away the agency from your voters. There are also things that do have over a 3.5 that I don't understand why they wouldn't have been nominated. Survive the Night by Riley Sager isn't up. Of course, no one likes it, but it's still a Riley Sager. Like, he's nominated every year. There's Every Last Fear by Alex Finley, which, like, maybe would have been the one that I voted for, but it's not nominated. For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Like, these, these are just sort of staples, maybe more on the booktube side, maybe it's just the perspective of where I am, but that was a huge book this year and tons of people love it and it has a 3.88 average rating, so like, enough people like it. 
my impression, especially from the thriller section, because I know that's the one I'm harping on, but that they're very mom books. <laughs> they're all very domestic and not very thrilling. Like The Push is nominated for Thriller, which is a book that I really liked, but it was not a thriller. <laughs> it was a family drama at best. Like I would categorize it under fiction and yet it's going to beat out a thriller that a lot of people like. I can't speak to the other categories as much because I'm not as well versed in the new releases for it. Romance is my other big genre and I'm not as upset by the selections there but in looking at all of the romances that I've read this year one of my favorite was A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria which just came out in October? September. But that means that it has not had enough time to accumulate as many writings, which sure no system here is ever going to be perfect. But it does mean that the people who have sought this out or have been waiting for it since it's the sequel, they will be able to say, no, this is actually my favorite romance of the year. This isn't just the most widely read one. Like it's leaning into the popularity contest aspect that we all knew was a problem with the Goodreads choice and making that the only thing, like removing any guise of it being something better. Anyway, I know this was weird and rambly, but it just feels like something that we should talk about because this is a big thing in the book community and there isn't really anything else like it. And this is such a staple of the book community. The Goodreads Choice Awards have been running for 10 years now and a lot of people will make videos based on it. A lot of people look forward to it every year. It's just disappointing. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I don't know if there's some bigger conspiracy for the change. I don't know if Amazon is trying to promote different things. I fully anticipate there's a good reason for the change. Well, maybe not a good reason, but a reason nonetheless. I'm just not privy to it. But also I kind of feel like I should have seen something coming because they delayed the awards this year. They're supposed to come out at the beginning of November, sometimes the end of October, and they didn't come out until the 16th which means they cut off a lot of time where people could have been reading and voting and refining what they wanted. So it kind of makes sense that they're just going for most popular. It's just a shame. Let me know if I'm unnecessarily worked up about this, but like this is something I've been looking forward to for months and I'm really disappointed. Is it a stupid thing to be upset about? Yes, of course, but most of the things that I care about are. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Goodreads Choice Awards. What are you going to be voting for this year? Honestly, I feel like I'm not going to vote for as many categories as I usually do because I haven't read as many things that are nominated and it just feels weird to me. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in a bit. Bye.